My name is John Beeble. I am the um, perfumer and general creator for January Sun Project, and I live in Cranston, Rhode Island. You look so serious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mm. began my interest in fragrance as a writer for Fragrantica. And um, the more that I was writing about perfumes, the more I was really curious about what some of these substances were that were in the actual perfumes. So it initially began as a, uh, an effort to smell a lot of things. And this is like, you know. I'm but to... as I was doing it, the curiosity of actually being able to make a perfume got stronger and stronger. And um, I, I think I kept daring myself a little like, well, what if you just try to make this or try to do that? And then it just kept expanding a little bit. And I think I um, was, before I knew it, I started to actually make some experiments and it just grew from there. So this is definitely gonna add a real bright and slightly spicy edge. I think creation, it, it's a bit of a, 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 a pressure to express something. It's not just about um, this sort of very listless and kind of formless idea in that, oh, I need to create something. Like, I think the idea becomes so strong that it just, um, you, you feel compelled to make something. And that's really what my creative process is about, is this, this inner... Um, energy really that comes from an idea that just won't let go and so i i i'm i move based on the energy of the idea i'm never without ideas which is you know a blessing and a curse right because you could never take a break then in a sense but it's it's really a blessing i should say because um it means you're always your mind is always alive i'm still working maybe i haven't freed myself up to just like go and make this purely indulgent, decadent, deep, resinous, balsamic type of fragrance, which I, I should do, which I'm- When, when you're an artisan that. perfumer, th there is sort of an expectation of um, balancing between making unusual perfumes that, that you wouldn't find in the mainstream, um, but also making things that are wearable and uh, at least to me, I, I, I consider that to be important. I mean, I, I actually do want people to wear these. I, I really do. The newest perfume is called Gong. When I create perfumes, I, I try to um, make something that I haven't made before. I mean, I really don't want to repeat myself in, in my work e either and that I um, like to make fragrances that really stretch for me, and they also provide me a way to uh, learn. And one thing I haven't worked with is musk, not, not as a singular or, or central element in a perfume. And I wanted to also work with the idea of temperature and to make a very cool perfume. And so by doing, I, I was doing some trials of what just became known as a green, green, cool green musk perfume. And been working on that off and on for about a year in little pieces. And this started to take on its own life. It, it does something that's a little different than my other fragrances where it has a few very distinct parts to it, these different accords. And so at one part, this note or accord is really recognizable and then at another part this one comes out and then another part this one comes out and then the next day when you smell it you know after sleeping it there's this like leftover really very sweet musk smell which you know is a uh, um was sort of this surprise um but i um i ended up combining a, a, some some pretty strange things together in the perfume but it is uh it retained that idea of being a cold musk that has fruit, a lot of fruit in it, and some spice, um, some leather, and some unusual accords that I made. 
including um, a daikon radish accord, which I was really excited about, and a green pepper accord that I made as well, too. And at one point in a bit of a, you know, kind of daydream, I just suddenly realized that it all had a uh, somewhat Asiatic feel to it and also this slightly cinematic feel to it. And I could kind of picture someone like kind of, you know, taking a hammer to a very large resonant gong. And I thought, yeah, this, this all makes sense. There's a lot of sound behind this idea. And then I sort of knew I'm, I'm on a right track with this notion. That sounded great. And then I started looking at gongs <laughs> and I found that, wow, there's a lot to learn about gongs and they're pretty fascinating things. Usually when you are holding a resonant metal object, like it stops resonating immediately. These are still fine. Many parts of the world make them mostly in the Far East and um, their sounds are quite different. And um, I began listening to recordings of gongs and, and um, what I soon learned which was very interesting is that the, the deeper and more resonant the sound comes from the larger the gong. And um, I did buy a few gongs and was stunned. I was really stunned, stunned by the sound. And I thought, I have to share this sound. I, I realized too in my in my search that these things are used a lot for meditation purposes and and so I wanted to the the kind of um, meditation aspect and, and the notion of a perfume as a thing to also meditate on and the sound to meditate on I was like wow this is really becoming something and before I knew it I was recording full songs you know a few involving the gongs and I play an instrument called um, santor which is an Iranian dulcimer. And, I started recording that as well, and before I knew it, there were eight songs, which <laughs> were all part of a piece um, that is now sort of a counterpart to the fragrance. So it has a vinyl release. It's a small release. It's about um, roughly 300 copies will be made. Um, so as you can see, you know, I mean, this it, it's one thing to have an idea, but it, these things take a lot of effort and time, which I, I'm only laughing because I, I I start out with great ideas, I think, which are, are great ideas, but I realize quickly they involve a lot of work, but they are coming out and they're coming out. And um, what I'm looking forward to is um, hearing, I'd love to hear some feedback about what people think of this sort of conversation between some of the songs and the sounds and the actual fragrance itself. And, you know, if they see some sort of connection or, or line through through the whole process.